In 102 days, Ghanaians will queue at 29,000 polling stations to elect a leader. Who is it going to be? Is it going to be John Mahama, who is, going, who is fighting for continuity, or Nana Adodam Kwakuvado, who is asking to be given the opportunity to serve for the first time? The campaign is heated all around the country. The politicians are on the campaign trail. The flag bearers are on the campaign trail. Even running mates are on the campaign trail and parliamentary candidates. In studio on Politicals today with me is uh, the Deputy Minister for Communication, who is also a Deputy Campaign Spokesperson for the John Mahama campaign. We'll find out how the John Mahama campaign is going. My name is Umaru Sanda Amadou. Okay, so the campaign trail is on. Your, your election center, City TV and City FM Online, as well as City FM, are going to bring you the issues from the grounds. But let's speak to someone who has been on the campaign trail, who speaks for the campaign team of the president who is seeking re-election. He has been a president for almost four years now. He had the privilege of serving six months bonus uh, after the demise of President Mills. But I'm sure they don't want to be judged on that. Let's judge him on his four-year track record and why he wants to be re-elected. The Honorable Felix Kwachofosu is a Deputy Minister for Communication. He is also a Deputy Spokesperson for the NDC and John Mahama campaign. You're welcome to Politicos. Thank you, Mario. You're looking good. Uh, Better Ghana is working and showing on you. Well, I'm sure that uh, there are many who would uh, point out that they have benefited in many ways. Uh, from the work that President Mama has done over the period. And to the extent that those testimonies exist, uh, it only goes to show that President Mama remains committed to fulfilling the promises that he made to the electorate, uh, which in turn would offer sufficient basis for him to be re-elected come December 2016. Critics and will say just a few are enjoying the rest. Well, I'm not sure that the many people who have benefited from his education policies, his health policies, his policies on the provision of water, the construction of good roads, the fixing of the transport system, the fixing of the communication system, the housing, and what have you, I uh, would agree with you. Let's do, let's do the campaign now. So immediately after you launched the, the campaign in Cape Coast, the president started the Western Region tour. He's done with that and he's going to the Northern Region. He's done with that now. Wh when next is he headed? Well, uh, information about that will be made uh, public very soon. Okay. As you are aware, he's in Kenya now to attend the ticket conference. And once he comes back on Monday, I would announce it. So it, is this going to be a continuous thing? For, Absolutely. For I the... mean, um, the president is prepared to wage a very thorough, comprehensive campaign. And as you are aware, he has the energy, he has the vigor, he has what it takes to wage such a campaign. And we are strategizing such that we will make most of the time available. Uh, unfortunately for him, as president, he has to combine the campaign activity with his work as a chief executive of this country and we will strike the right balance to ensure that even as he moves into the field to campaign, the administration of the nation does not suffer unduly. It's useful you mentioned that he's the president of the republic and this issue about abuse of incumbency has been repeating itself in election years and this time we are hearing the same. So the president is traveling to the northern region. He's going to campaign, but he's going with the state machinery. He's going with national security. He's going with vehicles belonging to the presidency not the flag bearer of the NDC. How do you differentiate or de how do you delineate him as flag bearer of the NDC on the campaign tour from being a president of the Republic and playing the roles with all the privileges that come with that? But the truth is that no such delineation is required. He remains president at all material times until his tenure ends. And it is the privilege that all presidents have enjoyed before him and those who come after him will enjoy. I believe that that matter is a bit overflocked. You know, the state makes provision for the security of the president. And if it is determined that his movements require a certain amount of logistics to support it, no matter what he does, either in his personal or official capacity, he will still have the protection of the state. It is not peculiar to John Mama, the candidate. It is something that all candidates before him who were president have enjoyed. I don't think that it gives him any extraordinary advantage as some seek to play up. It is an issue that I believe we need to leave behind. Because the, the, acquisition, really make a the acquisition is that, so you give out largesse. For instance, we've seen uh, photographs of, uh, of, of outboard motors being given to fishermen in the western region. You have said that that was part of the government's plan. Now we have also seen a vehicle that was given to an overlord in the Dagbon traditional area, the Abudu Gate, I believe it is. Was that the president gifting the chief in the northern region or it was a state? Well, as far as I'm, I'm concerned, it is not the state. If it were the state, it would be stated clearly. It was a personal gift that the president gave. 
based on a request that uh, the chief made. But regarding the claims about abuse of incumbency vis-a-vis -vis some government work that needs to be done, again, it is an overflowed issue. Like I said, he remains president at all times until his tenure ends. There's a long-standing progr program to distribute thousands of outboard motors. It started in 2010. The aim is to distribute 3,000. So when the president went to address parliament in his state of the nation address, he indicated that the program would continue. If you check the Green Book, we provide evidence of work that was done in that sector, where the president was distributing outboard motors and other accoutrements required for fishing at uh, Manchabuna. That was sometime in September last year. He indicated then that it is a program that will continue. And so he was in the Western region, and it turned out that the Ministry of Fisheries was ready to make that kind of presentation. But in the, no, in the Northern region, region, which yes. is the most interesting part for me, is the vehicle which you are now saying was a gift from the president. Why would the president be given a well, people make gift? people make requests of him, and if he has capacity to, as it were, meet those requests, I don't think that there's anything wrong with it. I, I don't see that as a problem at all. So this is a vehicle he purchased with his salary? Of course, I mean, the president has the capacity to purchase a vehicle. I'm sure even before he became president, he had the capacity to purchase a vehicle. I don't think it's an issue that we need to split us over. What about the other chiefs in the country? There are more than 100 chiefs. Well, a specific request was made. And if the president was in a position to meet that request, uh, I think that he should be allowed to do it. It doesn't amount to vote by... I don't think, think so. Again, again, I believe it, it amounts to an insult to the intelligence of the voters to create the impression that simply because somebody has been generous to you, you are necessarily going to vote for the person. I would like to believe that people base their decisions to elect leaders on specific benchmarks and indicators regarding how effective the policies of that individual have been rolled out and how it has benefited them generally, not because of some specific favors that are done. Um, we should create room for some of these things to be done. I mean, parties all over uh, this country engage in that kind of activity. I have seen uh, members of the MPP distributing MPP branded uh, uh, largesse, if you like, to the electorate. I don't believe that it would influence the electorate the way that people think that it would. In any if, event, if, if you give my father a brand new uh, V8, I'm not sure it was a, I'm not sure, I don't remember the exact make of, I think it's a V8. If you give my father a brand new V8, the tendency that will vote for you if you appear on the ballot sheet on December 7th. It's higher than if you don't give me anything. Well, an empirical basis would have to be found for that kind of analysis. If the person feels that your policies have worked and that he and his family will benefit from the things that you are doing or have benefited from the things that you are doing, I believe that he would vote for you. Um, if I met somebody on the street today and he asked of me uh, for some money and I give him, I don't believe that if tomorrow I found myself on the ballot paper, he would necessarily vote for me because of that. I think that we need to credit people with a little more intelligence than that. Uh, it doesn't bode well for our democracy to think that people will go out of their way to vote for people simply because of some of these things. In any event, there is a secret ballot. When you go into the polling booth, nobody is there. There's nobody who will be in a position to verify which way you voted. So nobody is under any compulsion as it were to vote for you because of some personal assistance that you may have, for, you may have offered. Yeah. Very well. You're listening to uh, the Deputy Campaign Community, the Deputy Campaign, campaign uh, what was it, the Deputy Campaign Spokesperson for the John Mahama and NDC campaign team on Politicals here on City TV. My name is Umaru Sandamado and that's Felix Kwachi Ufosu. So let's go still back on the campaign trail. The Vice President, Kwesi Misata, what's his role? We haven't seen him as after the launch in Cape Coast. We haven't seen him on the campaign trail. Is he supposed to be in Accra to stay the affairs of state while the President campaign? Well, our campaign will have many teams and it is graduated. We are doing it in phases. So as and when the program for the vice president is ready. I'm sure it will manifest. You are in the media. I'm sure your media house will be invited to come. Dr. Out. Baumia, the NPP running mate, he seems to be leading the charge for that side, the opposition. But I'm, not certain that, I'm not certain that our campaign should be defined by what the NPP does. We have our own strategy to which we are playing the game. You don't want to make your vice president or running mate visible like the NPP? I didn't say that. I told you that we are, we, we are running a multi-faceted campaign. There are many teams that will go out to work. Some overtly, some covertly. I'm certain that at some stage you will see the vice president on the campaign trail. But our movement, our tactics and strategies will not be defined by what the MPP does. We believe that we have garnered experiences over the years. I mean, it's not for nothing that we've won four out of six elections. So we are no mean force. We are a real force to be reckoned with when it comes to electioneering. And we know when to deploy our best assets. And at the right time, you will see the vice president on the campaign trail. The president and your candidate appears to be on the attack. He seems to be attacking the personality of the opposition leader. Is that the plan for your campaign? 
if anyone has been an, under attack, I would say that it is the president himself. I mean, for four years, he has been at the receiving end of all manner of accusations, some, most of them false from the position leader. He has been called names, he has been called incompetent, he has been called corrupt, all without basis. He hasn't been on the offensive. The president has simply spoken to some truth. You see, political campaigns, apart from the opportunity that candidates have to sell their message, tell the electorate exactly what they will do for them, also offer opportunity for an analysis and assessment of the people who put themselves up. As the president have gone around, and I have had the opportunity to be with him on some of those rounds, he has spoken to issues that border directly on the welfare of the people. He has spoken about his policies in education, health, um, transportation, water, roads, and what have you. And already, the NDC has a lot to show by way of the work that we have done. We have also commented or spoken to the policy platform that we offer going forward. There is room, always, to also point out flaws in the opponent that you believe constitute a reason yeah, why the by, by, calling him, is allowed. by calling him names? Well, the president has not called anybody names. The president has only spoken to the truth He's that we all know. But, 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 but nobody needs to be told that that is exactly what the opposition leader is when you look at what is happening in this party. If you have a party where people cannot dissent or criticize the, opposition, the leader without suffering some sanction, sometimes violent retribution, only one thing comes to mind, and that is dictatorship. So the president was spot on. He was speaking the truth. You are, you are in the media. You've covered the MPP extensively. You tell me whether you think that the state that the MPP is in is one that fosters frank and open discussion of internal difficulties. No. Everybody who has dared criticize Nana Kufuado has had some form of retribution or the other. If you are not violently attacked, things are done to ensure that you are thrown out of the party, and the evidence abounds. So the president was right. Felix Kwachio Fosu is a deputy minister for communication. He's also a deputy, so two deputies uh, for the John Mahama and NDC campaign team. And this is Politicals on City TV with me, Omar Sandamad. Finally, let's, let's, let's conclude on this note. So, as we speak, the people have been referred now to as the Moon T3. As we speak, they have walked out of the Akuse prisons as free men. And this is because of the president's pardon. Some critics hold a view that it is the final nail that has been knocked on the coffin of John Mahama and his government? Well, incidentally, those who hold that view are known MPP supporters, and some of them play surrogacy roles for the MPP. It is instructive that people who have never voted for John Mahama or will never vote for him are suddenly saying that the president has put the, the, the final nail in his coffin. Um, I would like to think, like the General Secretary of the NDC said, that such people would jubilate. They will perhaps not campaign and say that come 20. Uh, December 2016, Ghanaians will just walk to the polling stations and vote for them. I don't think that they are accurate in their analysis. Tony Lita, the man who represented John Muhammad during the election petition, his lawyer also spoke against pardoning the three. He didn't vote for NDC, you say? Well, and he will never vote for NDC. Professor Kwekwasari, a known MPP supporter and a leading voice in terms of constitutional law, has said that the president was right. Indeed, he was the first to call for. Uh, the remission under Article 72. Yeah, but you haven't spoken about Mr. 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 Uh, Honorable Kennedy Japan, a firebrand MPP member, called for remission. He only called for two months remission, but it was a remission nonetheless. But Kennedy uh, Doctor, 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 when you doctor, you doctor when you condemned, the condemned the Supreme in Court. The Supreme Court. Well, well, doctor Kennedy condemned the Supreme Court judgment. Doctor Nyawota a long-standing member of the MPP, in fact, the founding member of the MPP, has said that the pardon is in the right direction. So there can be disagreements in both parties about what the president has done. But the president believes that he did what was right in view of the fact that these gentlemen expressed considerable remorse. They sent him a direct petition through their lawyers. He assessed it. He followed due process. He consulted the Council of State who said that he should go ahead and grant the petition. He granted a remission, not a pardon. What it means is that he has actually upheld the position of the Supreme Court. He agrees with the Supreme Court that there was wrongdoing on the part of these gentlemen. The president, disregarded, the president disregarded wise counsel from his counsel. Well, I'm not, I'm not sure what you call wise counsel. The mere fact that one prominent lawyer within the NDC disagreed. It's not just a mere prominent well, lawyer. Well, well, but, but you, the president in these instances relies on the advice of the attorney general, who is actually government's principal legal advisor. And it was a view of the attorney general that uh, it was the right thing to do based on the circumstances. That not the council of state, this is the attorney general. Well, this is no, no, but the point is that, no, no, but the point is that the president cannot do this without consulting the attorney general. It's, 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 it's trite knowledge. The council of state is defined as the body that the president must consult within the constitution of Ghana. So he did that. But the president won't take such a decision without consulting the principal legal advisor of government. But the fact that a prominent lawyer, who even happens to be the personal lawyer, and this is not a personal matter. It was a matter of principle, it was a matter of state, it was a matter of a governance decision. 
the right processes were undertaken. But the mere fact of a disagreement by a prominent member of the NDC, for me, is not sufficient grounds to say that the wrong thing was done. Especially when I have indicated to you that there are leading figures in the opposition who have also endorsed what the president has done. Very well, that's for the electorates to watch whether or not it was a wise decision or otherwise. And the argument has been ongoing on traditional media and on social media over the freeing of the people who have now been referred to as the Moon Theatre. You were listening to Felix Kwachi Ofosu. He's a Deputy Minister for Communication under the John Dramani Mahama government. He's also the spokesperson of the NDC campaign. Well, that's how we end this week's edition of Politicals here on City TV. Do join us next week as we hit the campaign trail to assess the messages that are being brought to you by the various political parties and whether or not you should decide in their favor or otherwise on election day in 2016. And we know now it's December 7th. My name is Umaru Sandamaru. Do join us next week and have a pleasant weekend.